So welcome everyone to the session named uh, A Peek into Observability from Tester's Lens by Parveen Khan. Uh, we are glad she can join us today. And yeah, just without further delay, over to you, Parveen. Thank you so much for, uh, thank you so much. First of all, thank you so much for having me at APM conference. And I'm so super excited to present. Uh, I can see some of them are trying to join the session. Maybe we can wait a couple of like seconds or something to uh, give people to join the session maybe. Just maybe a few seconds more and then I can get started because I can see people um, still joining. Sure, why not? Yeah. Um, yeah. And then I can give it a start. Uh, let me share, um, let me quickly share my screen first and yeah. So yeah, I mean, I think I'll get started uh, without uh, delaying. I can see a lot of people joining in, so yeah. So um, hello everyone, uh, good morning and good afternoon and good evening, wherever you're joining this uh, um, session from. Um, I'm Parveen Khan and I'm a senior uh, quality analyst consultant at ThoughtWorks, uh, which is based in London, UK. Um, so today I'm going to share uh, my experience and my learning experience. Um, and the talk is all about, like you can see the title is a peek into observability from testers lens. There might be a lot of you all who already know uh, what observability is, or maybe there are few of few of you who are new to this. So the purpose or aim of um, like of this talk is to introduce you all uh, to this topic and to um, give you some food for thought to show how it could be helpful for testers. So this is basically my own story. Um, what you can expect from this uh, entire talk is like uh, I'll share my story of how I got introduced to this term and how I learned and um, how I introduced this in within my team. And I'll also try to share some of the uh, theory part of what exactly it is. So yeah, let's get started. So before into the jump, before even I jump onto the topic of like to say, oh, what this is what is observability and this is how we do it. I, I really want you to quickly uh, take you through this simple scenario and the credit for this scenario goes to Pierre Vincent from where uh, I took this inspiration from. Um, I like this, how uh, he used this example. So I thought, uh, let me use this as well. So, so imagine, um, what would you do if you kind of come across this kind of a foggy road uh, while you're driving uh, in a very weird weather condition, okay? Think about that. So one thing, what comes to your mind? So one thing that comes to our mind is that we need to slow down, right? But why do we need to slow down? Uh, it's because we don't have the visibility of what's ahead of us. And we kind of consciously make a decision based on the risk, right? If, you're not, if we are not able to drive, does that mean that we are bad drivers, uh, that we can't drive fast enough on a foggy road? Not at all, right? In fact, we are good drivers because we are making decisions based on the risk. Hmm. So does that mean that the car isn't good enough uh, to drive faster on this foggy road? Um, our cars can drive much faster, but, they, but we as drivers have, have to just hold them back because we know it's bad to drive when there's no visibility, right? So basically in this situation, we are kind of ultimately stuck. But how about these planes, like these aeroplanes all the time, they all the time fly among the clouds, right? So it is because pilots have additional instruments to do that and they don't have to solely rely on their eyes. What now, what is it to do with the software development? Okay, we all know that the current trend is all about going faster and delivering uh, value very faster. And we all are kind of trying to adopt uh, different practices like Agile, DevOps, working in distributed system, working in microservices world, right? And all we are trying to do is this because we want to deliver something with some value quickly, right? By doing this, all we are doing is we are building faster cars. 
the reason why we are moving into microservices architecture or maybe trying to work in distributed uh, systems uh, is because we want to uh, we want some kind of simplicity uh, while development right but on the other hand there's a lot of complexity and uh, there are multiple moving parts at the same time which means it it is even more complex so when distributing a system we are also distributing the places where things might go wrong so we know we need visibility but how can we get the visibility into a system so the answer is by having observability before um, even going ahead in trying to understand what observability is let's try to first understand why do we need it in first place like i always try to look for real real life examples to understand like any kind of given concept and i kind of don't get convinced by just reading through uh, some theoretical concepts so i'd like to share my real world experience with you of how i came to an understanding of why we need observability so to give you a bit of context um, i joined a new team um, and the entire team was totally new and i kind of had an opportunity to join this team and work on a really very exciting uh, and interesting product it was uh, an automated invoice system which was built on an archi uh, microservices architecture um and it used to like a bit more context about the was it used to take real time data on a lot of credit controllers and uh, to take care of the business credits so it was kind of very complex okay uh, the work which we were doing as a team was to build like new features we where we as a team joined so as a tester uh, when we start working on a new product what do we try to do what what is the first thing that we try to do like you 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 may try to answer like you may just drop something on the chat like what is the first thing that you try to do whenever you join a new team and you do, you know that the product is completely new and the domain is new what is the first thing as a tester we try to do so yeah requirements gathering so we read documentation yeah i think yeah that's what like we try to we try to get the requirements we try to read the documentation to the reason why we read this and try to gather this is because we want to understand the product right yeah understand the architecture yes so we want we want to understand the architecture we want to understand the product right so th that's exactly what i was trying to do as well when i joined this new product so the more i was learning about the product and trying to understand i would feel somehow that oh this is too complex i had that feeling that this product is too complex and another reason to feel uh, the this way was that um i had seen some kind of pattern um in 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 few weeks of me joining that kind of lot of tickets were being marked as blocked okay i used to see lot of production issues each day and like i saw that developers would pick up and i of course i used to pay with them and we 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 used to try to investigate uh, to find the root cause and um the the team used to spend quite a lot of time and like spend days and weeks and then mark those tickets as blocked as they did not have any kind of information about what is kind what is causing the issue or like maybe where the issue is so that made me think about what's wrong here like you know i stopped thinking that at this point i really stopped thinking that product is complex as an excuse so interestingly enough at the same time uh, i was trying to read a lot about observability without knowing when and where it's used so not just reading but um i was trying to understand the concept by using like different tools um that really promise to deliver uh, this to see what it brings having at the same point like having having conversation within my team with my team member with one of my team member i can say who was a developer gave me some kind of food for thought that oh this is what we are missing on a product because 
I had this conversation around why do we why can't we find information about um, those um, issues or something. So that's where I got this uh, food for thought that oh this is exactly what we are missing on our product and that's what is called observability. That conversation was kind of a light bulb moment for me because um, that kind of unlocked quite a lot of answers to few of my questions. But of course, it did um, open up a lot of uh, different questions as well. So I understood and I got an answer that we had very less or no visibility into our system, which is why uh, quite a lot of issues were marked as blocked um, as the team could not debug to figure out uh, the root cause. And because they could not debug, they could not find out any information or they could not say how to fix or what we could do ahead with that. Now, that, that was the situation where, okay, that is exactly where I understood, okay, this is what we need on our system. And I tried to, I tried to learn a bit more about it. Now, we know, I gave you uh, a bit of context about why we uh, needed observability as a team for us, okay? Now, I keep talking about observability, right? Now, let's take a look uh, into what exactly it is, okay? Uh, there are quite a lot of definitions that can be found if we Google it, but one of them um, is a, a simple one, which is like, it says that observability is a measure of how well um, our internal states of a system can be inferred from its external output, okay? It means that you can answer any questions about what's happening on the inside of the system just by observing um, the outside of the system and without having to ship, ship new code to answer those new questions. Like when systems are down, we need to find answers by asking questions as quickly as possible, okay? And all we, if all we are doing is asking questions and not getting an answer means that there's something lacking. So the system needs to be observable so that it can explain what, what's happening inside, okay? So, so that we can find out what's happening, not just what's happening inside of the system by just looking in uh, from the outside, of the, uh, outside, right? But the question is, how can we make the system observable and how can we make the system uh, visible? The answer to that is by using the data. Like now, how can we get the data? And you might think like, oh, how can we get the data and what type of data do we need to make uh, the system observable? So we can get the data to make the system observable uh, by adding instrumentation. And that instrumentation can give us uh, the data that can be in the form of uh, either, it could be in the form of logs, it could be in the form of traces, or it could be in the form of metrics, okay? Now, I'll pause the story a bit here, and then I'll, I want to talk a little bit more in detail about what exactly logs are and what are traces and what are metrics to understand more about this, uh, how we could use this kind of data to make the system more observable. So first let's look at logs. What are logs? A log, you, you might have already seen this, quite a lot of people might already make use of this. Like a log is a simple message which has some kind of information, right? It might be, um, it might be a timestamp, like you know, a simple, uh, a simple piece of information where it has a timestamp and has a payload, uh, which can help us to give more context, right? But looking at the logs, it might help us giving more context. Like it might give us information about. It depends on what we log, right? It gives information about which service it, is it coming from, and what has it done. So some kind of a payload, and at what time did it occur? So kind of this is what the log is. Again, um, getting back to, again, if we are talking about distributed system, we do not want to get into like uh, each service and try to look into the logs. So rather than having logs for each services differently, we need to have log, we need to have them centralized at one place. So it's, it is easier for us, okay? 
it's not about just having some logs in place to make the system observable, but it is about having um, centralized logs. Let me give you an example of why I think, why I am saying that we need to have centralized logs, okay? So while I was working with this team, uh, we used to use, we used to have logs. Like it's not that we, we never had logs. We used to have logs, we, but they were stored separately for each service. And we used n log for that. Um, and to access those logs, we had to uh, get into SSH into each of those services. And the only way to view um, the list of the entire logs was by using Notepad++. Whenever there was an issue, uh, like you know, whenever we wanted to find out something, what's going on, we would end up having multiple Notepad++, mm, Notepad++ uh, plus plus tabs open. And it was like such a pain. And to add to the way we could search, um, and to add to that pain, the only way we could search, uh, if they like, you know, if you want to search something from the logs, it was Control F. Like, can you imagine how painful that was? This is the reason why um, we should. It's not about just having logs, but this is the reason why we should have logs that are easily searchable. And the way it can be easily searchable is by having structured logs. So at this point, we kind of had uh, uh, like, you know, having to get into each service, like by the time we move around to different service to look at what information is, it is giving us, we, we kind of um, get lost of the, like, you know, we, we lose the context. So that is the reason why we need to have all the logs in a centralized place so that they are easily searchable. Now, after looking at the logs, now let's look at metrics. Uh, metrics could be like, you know, it is kind of a very simple friending number, or you can say it's it's kind of a simple value that can express the data about the system. So these metrics, uh, like you can see like these metrics could represent different things, right? Um, like they, they might be like system metrics, you might have some application metrics, you might have some business metrics. So usually, um, they kind of are calculated over a period of time. For example, if you say a system metric can tell you how much memory is used um, by a pro process out of, like in total, okay? Uh, an application metric could be something like showing the number of requests per second being handled by a service, or it could be anything like error rate of an API. And an example of a business business metric could be something like, oh, how long does it take for a user to log in? Or how long does it take for a user to navigate between different um, different uh, pages, like something like that, okay? Depending on the product you have. So metrics are really good at aggregating things, but not really good at pinpointing specific detail about um, something like, oh, at this particular time, this is the customer who was having the problem. So how could we do that? It is by using uh, some more data, right? In the form of traces. The next thing to look uh, understand is traces. So trace is kind of, traces are something like, it is kind of telling your story, uh, which kind of gives you more level of details, okay? It shows the entire flow of the request. And I think it's kind of really very valuable while, um, uh, while debugging. So a, sting, a single trace shows the activity for an individual transaction, or you can say as uh, for an individual request or an event as it flows through an application. It kind of shows the end-to-end -end request and, uh, and traces are really critical part of observability as they provide a lot of context. Okay, so I have been uh, saying quite a lot of time that you might have noticed that with observability, we can ask questions, but what kind of questions can we ask? Okay, I'll give you an example. So I'm, I'll give you some, it could be any kind of questions depending on the context of your product you're working on, but I'll give you some of the examples of what kind of questions we can ask to find the answer if we have a system, a observable system or visibility of the system, okay? It could be like, oh, why is uh, X broken? Why is my service broken? Um, what went wrong during these, uh, what went wrong during the release? Like, you know, or it could be like, what are the services dependent on my service? Like, you know, where, for example, if you're working on a one single service and then what went, wh wh why has the performance degraded over the past quarter? What log should we look for right now when there is some kind of issue? Or what did my service look like at point X? 
these are some of the examples which you could you could ask while uh, uh, if you have while looking at the logs or while looking at the traces so just like just like how we talk about devops um, we cannot say that uh, we are doing or we are adapt adopting or we are following devops by just saying by just having some automated tools in place it is more than tools right it is more than uh, it is it is a cultural and mindset change right similarly we cannot say that we are following or approaching or doing observability by just having different tools in place it is not just about getting the tools and having lots of data in place and saying that oh we are uh, we are following observability or our system is observable it's not about that it's a it's a it's a cultural change and it's a mindset change as well so now i'm sure we all are testers right now most of us uh, among the audience are testers right so now you might be thinking like okay we get it observability is this and that fine but now what what's in for testers with all this observability and all these new tools in place why what how does it help uh, testers right so it 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 makes easier to find more information around issues like i'll give you some of those some of those um, uh, benefits i can say not all of them but some of them so one of them would be easier to find information around issues so for example while we are testing we might see um, uh, some kind of unexpected behavior or maybe we kind of see some failures right so having these kind of uh, having these kind of tools in place um, kind of allows us to look under the hood to find what's happening with each of the requests like you know and not just that it allows us to learn uh, more about a system and how it helps us in learning how it communicates and works i mean the more uh, previously like the more i would use is the dev tools to see what's going on um, uh, when something did not look right to me while i was testing but i wouldn't get enough information so by having these tools uh, help me in getting more information that can be like for example added to the tickets like you know when while we are writing the bugs or while having the conversation with the team uh, when uh, like you know which might help the team to understand to give more context and information around any kind of an issue right it's not just about finding more information while looking for looking into the issues but it could also help us uncover understanding of our product testers like it could be another reason another help or another useful benefit of uh, uh, benefit of this would be for testers would be like a tool for exploring and asking questions now how many of you all think that we uh, testers are are curious explorers you can just drop jo drop something in the chat saying uh, like you know uh, do you think testers are curious explorers yes yeah they have to be yes of course yeah so i think uh, we testers are very curious explorers and we are great at asking questions right as a tester um, i mean of course i'm sure we all like i tend to ask a lot of questions when i don't understand things so as we know the, as we say that testers are great at exploratory testing not just good at asking questions but the testers are always curious to find more information about the system right so while exploring the logs and metrics and any kind of like this kind of data testers might point out more point out where more instrumentation is needed and not just that but it also supports and helps testers for testing in production so it kind of allows the team not just to shift left but shift right like for example like you know when it's not just like um, uh, you're making use of the data but you we as testers while testing uh, and you making use of those logs or metrics or any kind of data we might say that oh we are not finding any of information uh, when something is gone wrong can we improve our instrumentations can we improve our logs so that i can see what's going behind so that whenever there is kind this kind of issue is in production then we would know there is enough information to figure out now i'm not saying that if we have logs it's always like um, we will able to find everything but it might help okay so 
we as testers uh, because we are very curious explorers we explore the entire product we might also try to add the value of uh, improving our instrumentation when needed i really like how um, like i saw this tweet and i, and I really like how marit has put this together saying that a lot of times good debugging and good exploratory testing are both indistinguishable okay so when when the developer explores they call it more often um as debugging so whether they know there is a problem or this kind of suspect there is there is a problem what do developers or anyone like you know uh, while debugging what do they do do they know that where the problem is no right they try to find where the problem is that's what exactly debugging is so when tester explores the same debugging is close to the last word right it is similarly like we don't know like we don't know but still we are trying to explore and learn more about the system so to kind of like um summarize i would say by making by making systems more observable anyone on the team can easily navigate from the effect to the cause in the product of the system okay it i'm not saying that you get the answer straight away but it makes it easier to debug so the goal of observability is not just to collect um logs metrics and traces but using the data uh, to get the feedback and it just doesn't allow us to find the knowns of the system but also allows us to know and find out unknown unknowns okay it's not because it's not all about what we know uh, what we know about the system and we found out what we know right it it is more than that so it is all about finding the unknown unknowns and making system observable will help us in figuring out what are the unknown unknowns of our system of our product of our application and like every learning experience or every story or every journey has something to take away right so even i had some i had some of the takeaways too out of this learning experience while trying to um, while trying to understand while i'm trying i was trying to learn and why i was trying to implement these within my team thinking outside the box so the key takeaway for me is that we as testers can can go out of the way like you know i think we care and advocate about quality and that could be related to like the way we try to bring and like if we see something wrong or if we want to improve our quality it could be different ways we try to um, improve that like right so it could be like we try to improve bring improvements in the process maybe bringing in the new tools related to test automation but that's not the limit i learned that we we do not have to limit ourselves and say that okay like you know this is not related to testing so let's not look into this or let's not learn about it so while throughout this uh experience throughout this process um i saw within my team that i saw that there were problems within my team my team was going through i saw the problems that team was going through like for example developers were getting frustrated when they could not resolve the production issues and i saw that i noticed and i saw that product owners were um, getting frustrated um for um like not having an answer to provide those answers to the client and they were not having enough information related to those uh, production issues i didn't knew the answer or i didn't knew the solution to it but being active in the community and seeing uh, new tools and the concepts and exploring them and finding and finding the solution and then trying out myself uh, by using uh, different tools and i tried to present that to my team as a as kind of a, a like you as a suggestion to my team or maybe you call it as a um quick like you know um a poc like you know a proof of concept so i tried this so not limiting myself to just testing tools only and trying to think uh, outside the box to help my team so before i left that team we were not there yet in terms of 
implementation for the uh, the entire observability part but we had already we started we by after this we st had uh, our first step started was like from having visibility to like we had no visibility to having structured and stress, uh, like centralized logs that could be easy that were very easy to query like you know have like the steps we took were like smaller steps by starting to get uh, implement the centralized logs first moving all the logs into one place so that they are easily searchable then trying to implement some traces so we took smaller steps one by one to uh, start implementation so to end um, to end with i would really like to say that observability gives power to the entire team to get the visibility when needed okay it's not it is not something it's not a tool that only can uh, it's not a tool or it's not some not the data just used only for certain roles or certain people but it helps it gives the power to the entire team when we get the visibility and observability is much more powerful when you apply like kind of with the right mindset and the clear kind of a process and using uh, different tooling in in place it also allows the teams uh, to it it kind of also allows the team to become more proactive towards the issues rather than reactive so quite a lot of time again i'm not saying that that will solve entirely by having observability but quite a lot of time what happens is like we lot of time we know there are some kind of issues only when the uh, the users complain so um by ha by having these kind of things in place um it kind of allows the team to become even more uh, proactive um, rather than being very reactive so it kind of gives power and kind of empowers everyone on the team whether it's kind of a, again as i said like it could be developers it could be ops engineers it could be infrastructure uh, engineers or it could be sres or it could be testers and we as testers need to be need to be comfortable using these kind of tools and um, so that we can learn more about the product we can add value uh, we can add value to this kind of implementation so if there is one thing apart from uh, getting introduced to observability and how this observability is helpful um, one thing uh, one if there is one more thing that i want you all to take away from my talk today is that um, we all believe in like we all believe in diversity and having diversity means building powerful solutions right then why not have diverse roles like the de developers testers ops engineers or any other roles or sres be involved while building these kind of solutions like while building um, like observability on the system so this could add so much value uh, when we as a team try to build these kind of solutions rather than just um, saying that oh this is not um, something for us and it could be not useful for something for us so this is one thing i learned throughout this that we as a testers can also add value to this and can also make use of um, can make use of these kind of tools and observability um yeah thank you so much for joining my session today and um i'm re i'll be happy to answer if you have any questions and and yeah be sure to check out my blog site i do blog um i share all my learnings and um i share um all things at on parveenkhans.com uh, this is my blog site and don't forget to follow me on um parveen_khan10 uh thank you again for joining my session and listening to my story thank you parveen uh, that was really a great session thanks for you know all those understanding so on uh, observability i learned a lot i am not basically from the tester background but uh, uh, thank you so much for all those uh, you know understanding it was uh, quite informative uh, uh in terms of questions i i feel the session was awesome you know nobody has any questions so far it was so good with the examples everything so yeah 
I think, uh, yeah, I don't see any questions. So, yeah. Um, correct. Uh, being a host, potentially, you know, I can ask some questions. Uh, if nobody has, uh, since I said I'm not from a tester background, uh, purely from the back-end NGO perspective, uh, I always had this question, uh, probably nice time to ask. Uh, so uh, we do this, uh, uh, so being a developer, I generally do unit testing. I write, you know, component testing, uh, component test, integration test, et cetera, functional test. I always, you know, used to wonder how, uh, you know, QAs, when they write their test, et cetera, how, you know, they are different and, uh, you know, what we do or whether the roles are actually quite, you know, merging in one on the other. Uh, so if you could, you know, uh, uh, give me some insight into that, probably, you know, a few people like me who are from the uh, non-testing background, uh, they will also, you know, get help from this particular answer. Um, yeah, so you mean to say is like how, uh, the, like, yeah, come again, can you come again the last part because I was just trying to stop my screen share, like you want to see like how testers can, how, how do they, can you just repeat that part please, sorry, I'm so sorry. Hey, no worries, no worries. Uh, so just to repeat, uh, so it's quite abstract, by the way. Uh, the question is quite abstract. Uh, the idea is that we always write this unit test. We also yeah. about, uh, you know, developers writing the test and yeah. you know, developers do those debugging. And uh, when testers are doing exploratory testing, you know, some of that merges for a period of time. Uh, so on the similar lines, it's like uh, when, uh, you know, we, you know, uh, do sort of a TDD, BDD, you know, we write tests, yeah. write function yeah, yeah. tests, integration test, etc. Uh, yeah. Always wanted to know what would be the mindset of, you know, a, a tester per se, when when they do their QA, right? Uh, with, with what sort of a mindset and how does it differ from the developer's mindset? So that would basically help me to understand uh, the two roles, like, you know, different. Yeah. Ways. Yeah, I think, yeah. <laughs> uh i think you're trying to understand the mindset yeah i mean it's uh, it's it's hard to explain but one thing i would say is like i think as a tester that's what i was mentioning during my talk like how this concept will help us is because like we have this mindset of like um asking the, those questions being curious about how our users are going to use this when it's like when we release this like for example if you are working on any kind of a feature and when i'm testing that feature and I'm looking at the different layers, even though I'm looking at the different layers, it could be APIs or code or pairing with the devs uh, on the unit test level. I always have that user hat on me and uh, always have that uh, curiosity hat on me saying that, okay, why are we doing this? Why are we doing that? So I think having that kind of a mindset always, uh, that is more of like, you know, while exploring users, mind is always in our uh, like, you know, uh, whatever we are testing so that's that's one thing i would say like that's how the mindset would be like you know when we are testing how differs like i don't know how exactly the mindset of developers is while they are actually writing the code or like while they're implementing the feature what they think about but when we as testers i can talk about everyone on like uh, as testers but i think it is very quite common that when we are exploring we make sure that we try to use different personas like not just one oh this is a user and he'll use, he or she will use this just in this way but trying to understand like trying to think from different personas point of view how and like you know and trying to see how uh, the journeys would look like you know not not just that simple uh, piece of puzzle like you know we look right. at the whole entire picture not just the one single piece of puzzle or if that puzzle works fine that's it yay no I think we look at the entire um, picture and then try to uh, look from different personas and different user perspective. And I think that's uh, that's how, uh, if I say some of the general uh, thinking kind, like I think that's how I would say, yeah. Perfect, cool. I, I think, yeah, that, that answers my question. Uh, thank you for that. Thank you so much for that. Uh, so oh, I think we have one question now. Uh, I think that's more of like an answer to what we uh -huh. were talking about. <laughs> In the yeah. end perspective, that's correct. That's that summarizes what we have just mentioned. Uh, yeah. Well, thanks. Yeah.
So yeah. I think we are uh, we are pretty much at the end. Then uh, I think if there are no more questions, anyone if you if if even if you don't have any uh, questions, maybe people can still like if people ask, I can see still people around. So you can just uh, drop in some kind of conversation, and it could be conversation, not kind of a question as well. So even that is fine. I can sure. see like some yeah I can see Sorina saying that dev think around to make make things work, but we testers think around to find the edge cases to break it exactly. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. Yeah. I do agree. Yeah, I do agree. Not exactly like yeah we try to break it uh, in the sense of like just trying to break it. No, but just trying to see if it breaks if uh, in some different kind of edge cases if people are like if different users are using it. So I do agree with that. Yeah. Correct. I think so. Yeah, I think uh, that's like pretty much uh, end of our session. Uh, 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 thank, thank you, uh, Parveen, uh, for sharing your experience with us today. Thank you so much for having me and thank you so much for being an amazing host. <laughs> it yeah. was awesome.